Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be taking you through a lesson about ethograms. Ethograms are a cool tool that researchers use to learn about animal behavior. So for this lesson, I recommend that you have some paper, a pencil, a calculator of some sort, um, and then there are some PDF files linked to this lesson that have some ethograms. If you want to print those out and use them, feel free. Otherwise, paper and pencil is just fine. So what is an ethogram? Well, the ethogram itself is just a detailed list of behaviors. This is an example of an ethogram from an actual research project. It lists the type of behavior, what the behavior is, a code for the researcher to quickly jot it down, and then a detailed description of the behavior. So a researcher will take this list of detailed behaviors and go watch an animal for a certain amount of time and record the behaviors that they're seeing the animal do. For example, this ethogram from the London Zoo divides the researcher's time by 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, the researcher will jot down the behavior that they're seeing an animal do. Researchers can then take that information about how an animal is spending their time to answer questions. So from an ethogram, we can look at this chart that was made about Reese's macaques, which are a type of monkey. We can see that Reese's macaques spend their most time foraging. That's that bit in green that's so big. And foraging means looking for food. Then we can see by that bit of red that's also quite large that Reese's macaques spend a lot of time resting or sleeping, usually in social contact. So researchers can use ethograms and this information to answer a lot of cool questions. For instance, how would the monkey's behavior change with a large crowd at the zoo? They would redo this ethogram and compare the results to see how that behavior would change. Ethograms are typically designed to be specific to a research question. For instance, the Reese's macaque ethogram that we just looked at, those behaviors were specifically chosen for those monkeys. However, this is a basic ethogram designed from the Lincoln Park Zoo that's accessible to really any animal in any situation. So with this ethogram, the researcher records behavior every 15 seconds using a very basic list of behaviors. These behaviors are feeding, is the animal eating or drinking, socializing, is the animal interacting with another animal, self-groom, is the animal grooming, active, is the animal running, playing, walking, etc. Inactive, is the animal sleeping or sitting? And then we have not visible. Is the animal someplace you can't see them or other? Is there a behavior that's happening that's different from what I already mentioned? All right, now that we know the basics of an ethogram, we're gonna put our skills to the test with a real animal. We're gonna watch videos of my cat Lola and make a practice ethogram. All right, for this practice, we're gonna use the ethogram from the previous example. So feel free to print it out, write it down, or just follow along as I walk through it. I'm gonna show you clips of Lola, and I'm gonna pause every 15 seconds so we can determine what she's doing. All right, that was 15 seconds. Lola is sitting, so we will mark inactive in the first row. All right, that's the next 15 seconds. Lola was playing, so we will check mark active in the next row. That was 15. Lola is grooming, so check mark self groom. All 
All right, Lola is playing with my cushion. Um, so that counts as active. So our fourth and final check mark can go in the active column. All right, awesome. We have an ethogram filled out. Now the tricky part is, how do we share our results? Do you remember that Reese's macaque pie chart from the beginning of this lesson? We're gonna learn how to make one of those. So, first we need to add up all the marks in the row. So looking at ours, we have one self groom, two active, and one inactive. Then the next step is to divide those numbers by the total number of intervals. So for ours, we had four intervals, so we're gonna divide one by four, two by four, and one by four again. The final step to get our results is to multiply those numbers by 100 so that we get the percentage spent for the behavior. So we have 25, 50, and another 25%. Now that we have our percentages, if you would like to make a pie chart like the one we saw previously, feel free. I made one so you can look at it. We took our numbers, put it into a pie chart. We can see that Lola spent 50% of her time being active, 25% being inactive, and 25% self-grooming. All right, now that we've done one ethogram together, it's time for you to test out your ethogram skills by yourself. We have a short clip of a dog playgroup. I will mark on the screen every 15 seconds, go ahead and pause it, and then mark down the behavior what's going on. Some clips do have multiple dogs in them, so just focus on one and mark their behavior. You can either use the ethogram that we used in the previous example, or we have this special dog ethogram just made for this. So go ahead, choose an ethogram, here's the video, let's see what results you get. had fun watching those dogs play. Um, so I used both ethograms and I made results for both. Um, so you can compare your results to whichever ethogram you used. For the basic ethogram, the one we used with Lola, I found that the dogs were social, um, 
interacting with each other socially for 70% of the time and then we're active solo for 30% of the time. It's okay if your results don't look like this. Um, results are super dependent based on what dog you chose to look at um, or the exact moment you chose to record behavior. So don't worry if your results are not the same. Then I use the more challenging ethogram, the one specifically for dog groups. Um, and so I found that there were positive interactions 70% of the time, there was water play 20% of the time, and then some interaction with the camera 10% of the time. Um, again, it's okay if your results don't look exactly like this. The main goal was to just get us looking at animal behavior and thinking about the ways that we can quantify it. Um, so if you have fun watching animals and you now know what an ethogram is, then that's it. Goal accomplished. Thank you so much for joining us for this lesson. If you are interested in learning more, here are some cool resources. So the Lincoln Park Zoo, the people that also made our basic ethogram that we used, also have an app. It's called Observe to Learn. You can create ethograms on it and they have some more resources about animal behavior. Also, a really cool way to test out your ethograms and just practice watching animals and using ethograms is to watch live streams. I hope you learned something today, and I hope you feel confident in using an ethogram. All right, thank you so much.